So today I'm going to do another video about my Red Lake Motion Extra HG LE camera. So that's this one right here. And we're going to open it up because we've. I emailed um, IDT, which is now who owns Red Lake, and they do not make they don't they don't sell the STP connector, and they weren't interested in telling me what the spec was on it. So we're going to have a little look-see in here and see what's going on. Now it is a quote-unquote security connector so it's a Torx with a pin in the middle of it. Not really a big deal. There are six of these on the back. Um, it honestly looks like it's pretty similar to uh-oh, that one's stripped. Uh, maybe not stripped, maybe it's a different size. So I've got two of them that are a different size. Okay, and this one wants to stick. So, let's see if the next size up does anything for us. It doesn't. That's not a good sign. All right, let me put my glass in and see what these things actually are. Uh, so, I'm using Torx, and these are actually... Allen key with a dot in the middle. Hmm. Oh well. So I bought this whole little set, I don't know, Amazon for seven bucks or something at one point. really not a big fan of these kind of security screws, but whatever. Slightly too big. Right, that's pretty close. Thank you. 
you know, the problem with security screws is, well, they're just not that secure. Well, maybe it's this style. Alright, that's it. So I'm not sure what the difference is here. This is 764, oh, I bet those are metric. It's a three millimeter metric security screw. Oh, that one actually had some bite to it. spudgers here and spudgers are just tools for getting inside little cases like this and I think we need the beefy one just based on what we've seen so far out of this don't think that's the answer Take the lens off and get the cap on. I'm not going to put it all the way on, that's good enough. I just want the dust out. While we're at it, let's go ahead and look at this battery. Let's see what kind of battery it really is. That is the two millimeter one. Sure enough. And when the traditional spudgers don't work, there's always the, hmm, yeah, there's just not much to that battery, is there? Apparently made in the USA, 2002. So, that gives us kind of an indication of what we're dealing with. And we'll just put it back in. Well, actually, you know what, let's pop that back out one more time. Now, this is all rated for 100 G's, so my guess is there's a battery that is hot snotted in there. So we'll deal with that later. I'm gonna get these put back on.
go back to our American spudger on this end. Does look like the side will come off. I wasn't really planning on doing a teardown on this, but um, it isn't going to do me any good. These have to come out as well. Really rather not have the center exposed, but that's how this works. And this is um, a weird resolution. It's just over 720p. And my understanding is Red Lake did make all their own sensors. This is one of the things that kind of sets them apart. this is but there was a connector so 
we'll just set that whole thing off to the side. And then this is a card slot assembly, and that's probably what's holding is a whole bunch of connectors there. So let's go ahead and see if we get this one out. I'm going to put this back on because I'm really just, I don't want to jack this up. It's interesting, there's a pair of connectors here and it's using a Pixel Magic Oak Technology uh, board on the controller. Looks like it's using a Xilinx, uh, it's going to be a communications chip. And there's some interesting shielding here. And more connectors on the top. And this has little pins here to, to protect it. So what we got to figure out now is what's it going to take to get this to come apart. Because it's clearly, there's an assembly back here that is pinned into these boards. And that just may be that it's just pinned into these boards. So I'm going to try and... the shoe is a problem. Well, let's pop this shoe off here. doesn't fit so we're going to do something a little bit different we're going to spec it four point six so I bet you it's a four and a half millimeter wrench another weird so all right so I finally found a wrench that fits I have no idea what size it is So this was calibrated in April of, looks like 2004, and looks like it was made in San Diego, and you can see here the machining works, so all the parts are machined. Pulling that off seems to have done the trick. Well, maybe not. Maybe 
just don't know why. Mm -hmm. I think it's actually stuck on the STP connector, which is what we want to mess with. So. Let me go find a screwdriver. some writing on here. This is an amphenol connector. Let me see if I can see what it says. Right back. Right, so one of the things you can do is use your phone. So it is an amphenol connector. 0338. Alright, we'll look that up and see what it is here in a minute. part numbers you got there. Alright. So meanwhile, we're gonna go just a little further. Really hoping to get a peek at the memory in this thing. All right, so that is an Amphenol Millspec TV PS zero zero RF fifteen dash eighteen series uses twenty gauge wires and. I still don't know what's holding this thing in. Um, so we're just gonna start digging till we figure it out. Yeah, that's not what we should be using. I don't have a spanner wrench for this. That's irritating. Oh, I bet these are it. Let's see if this gets us anywhere. this difficult to get apart.
there's no screws that I've missed. So at this point, the only thing I could do is start to take this side of the shell off and see what's going on over here. And it says it was calibrated in August of 16, or May of 16, and it used to belong to ZF, uh, which is kind of interesting. I have no clue what they would have used this for. Something right here is holding this thing together. And I mean holding it together. this. So let me um, Sure enough, that was what's holding it together. Interesting. So before we get too carried away, let's put some of this crap back together so that we don't have to remember how exactly this works. This is a really well-built assembly, and I was hoping it wouldn't be, because I was hoping to be able to just rewire it, but it doesn't look like that's going to happen. I may be forced to work through that interface. I was really hoping not to. Right, so, what we got going on there is... Um, yeah, that connector is pretty solidly mounted. Man, this is a well-made board. Gold connectors. They did not spare any expense. So we'll come back to that because that is what we took this apart for. But first, let's have a peek. So, there is space for two more boards. And these boards use a... Um, clamp to hold them in. They ain't, they ain't going nowhere. And it looks like the RAM is right here on the board, so it's not going to be as simple as, say, a Phantom where I could just maybe swap SIMs. And the Ethernet interface is built onto it. This is, this is something else. 
and this side with the battery backup I don't know what this does battery backup is where I would want my RAM but I have no idea this looks like power supply board and power supply board would make sense because you've got your heat sinks and that'd be another good place for your battery none of it's labeled it's thick really thick and can't really tell what's going on so let me stop the camera for a second the connectors were bent and I went to unbend them and they actually snapped off so yeah I hope battery board's not honestly that important because I don't think it's ever going to work again in fact I know it's not going to work again shame on me I shouldn't have touched it um so I might have just bricked the whole thing but that's okay I mean this was a gamble to begin with it's it's really a well engineered assembly there's, there's things that I really like about it, but I'm going to take a second to put these back in. I'll be right back. Right. I want to make sure I don't have too many things left over. And those are all good. I've got some that go in the front here. Let me get rid of these. to manage my complexity by putting some of this back together that I want to mess with in hopes that it might actually work when I'm done with it. I have low expectations uh, based on breaking the battery uh, connector, but it may not need the battery to, to operate. That's just a backup. And of course, there's just really good chance I bricked the whole thing, but whatever. comes in on one of those, goes up to the, uh-huh, all right, let's set this somewhere where it won't do any harm, and let's come back to this and take a look and see what we got going on. Network is through the main board, so all we're really dealing with here Should be six screws to get this board out. surprised that they went to the trouble to mount all this on a board because it just makes it expensive. It's another board that has to be fabricated and it's just 
more expense for manufacturing. And I don't believe this is something that they made very many of. So, it does have a fuse here. I was really hoping there would be another way to get power into this thing. Let's see what a filter 100 V10 does. DC to DC power converter. How the hell did that pull up? So, apparently, everything is ganged through this power supply right here. Can't do much with it, but... So, it looks like this is a 100-volt, 10-amp uh, 
input. So they're just ganging three pins together, uh, 20 gauge pins. Hmm, what a crappy design in terms of being able to, to hot rod voltage in. see what's going on my eyesight's just not as good as it used to be so I'm going to use my cheater So what I think is going on is some of these pins, this is the ground side and then I think this is the hot side. So let's see what the top is. In, out. Uh, pin one, pin two, pin three, So this is your hot and your something that's not conductive. So this is your positive and your negative coming out. And this is probably some kind of voltage regulation. You could, in theory, jumper across these to power this whole thing up and then just run. I don't know where you'd run a cable back out. I really don't. Uh, let's see what the connector looks like. C, D, E, and P. C, D, E, and P. So, here, 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 and here. Yeah, I really can't tell what's going on here. It's just too small for me. apparently do not need to be off. So we'll go ahead and put these back on.
One thing, this is uh, really a uh, 100G rated board. But everything is going through this and popping back out here. In, out, ground. And according to this data sheet that we have, Probably the ground, everything's going to be on the ground side, but there's no real telling on that. Nicely machined. Pop this back in. So that's all back together. Let's check the salt tight. essentially where we started but I'm gonna get this thing off here so thanks for watching please subscribe to my videos if you've enjoyed this and uh, I'll be back with more I'm not done with this thing by a long shot
Okay. So. back together. <laughs> oh, good. Well, whatever I did, I did manage to bend something, so... one hell of a Ethernet connector, but if you had that on your laptop, it'd never break. Now that's impressive. That it just goes back together that smoothly.
right. Now all that we've got left to do is deal with the bottom. Oh, and um, yeah, I guess I should put these screws back in. I don't know what the hell they actually do, but I'll go ahead and put them in because, well, they're pretty. You know, as you become more accomplished as a tinkerer, you can judge the quality of your progress by what's left over. Or in this case, what's not left over. I've got a couple of split washers left over. I don't care about that. This thing isn't going back into rugged service. So, anyway, please leave your comments and questions below, and thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and like the video if you've enjoyed this.